How's everybody doing? Do I sound weird in the mic? I know. I feel like I sound like I'm on like an airplane. Like, this is your Atlanta Delta airline. We're headed off to Chicago. Please make sure you buckle in and listen to the safety briefing. I don't know what they actually say, but what have we been talking about? Knowledge. Which is what? Correct. Now I've got a question. Knowledge sometimes requires fixing something, right? So what's something that you've like not known how to fix and been able to fix before? Anybody? Like something that you like don't like is broken and you need to fix it and you're like, your bike, how'd you fix it? Super glue and duct tape. That's amazing. Carson, what have you fixed? There you go. Instruction manuals are amazing for fixing things. Anybody else? Have you, like, had to fix something? A toy is broken or, like, your Kindle isn't turning on or... No, you're... Do you think you fixed that yourself? Uh, you, you said it. You said it yourself. and Yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay. Me, personally, I consider myself a tinkerer. Just last night, I had a camera that was not working, and so... You know, I looked in it, and I had to um, get the battery corrosion off the battery port. You know, if you leave batteries too long in something, and it gets all white. So, you know, scrub that with some lemon juice. And then I had to reformat an SD card, and none of y'all even know what that means. And I didn't either. All right, JoJo, my tech wizard. But basically, I had to do a lot of Google searching, a couple YouTube videos, figure out how I was, dude, it, how it worked out, right? So we have different ways. To figure things out. We've got Google, amazing. We've got YouTube, amazing, dude. Like, who needs a car mechanic if you can just YouTube how to fix your car? But what happens if we have questions about God? There's no, like, YouTube for, like, God, is there? You can't just, like, Pull up your phone and be like, hey, oh, God, I got this question. Uh, what do you mean when you said this? Like, he's not, like, right there, like, oh, this is what I meant, right? So what do we do when we're, like, confused and we have questions? You see, one of the biggest things about knowledge is understanding that you don't know everything, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I'm super smart. I know all of this. But in reality, they don't. And the smartest people often ask the most questions about things, right? So a couple weeks ago, we learned about a guy. His name was John. John the Baptist, correct. Am I even on? Okay, I'm just making sure. I couldn't tell. But John the Baptist. And what did he do? He baptized people, right? Do y'all remember what his, like, his mission was, what he was doing, why he was baptizing people. Preparing people for Jesus, right? So was John Jesus? No. I think he made that very clear. I'm pretty sure we talked about that. But he was a, a dude. He was a person. They, he was a prophet. And oftentimes prophets came off a little bit different than everybody else. They said um, he wore camel hair clothes. I don't know if we talked about that, but can you imagine clothes made out of camel hair? Probably really, like, itchy, and, like, he just ate cr crickets and locusts and, and honey, and he was just kind of out there, and, you know, I can imagine he just has, like, a big crazy beard, and he's just all, like, crazy looking, and he's just like, wah! But he was also a prophet. So that means... A prophet is essentially someone who speaks for God. So he had a message to the people. He was preparing the way for Jesus. And so one of the things he has to do is he has to tell the truth. Often prophets had some pretty bad news. If you look in the Old Testament, a lot of the times the prophets are 
telling Israel or kings that they're doing something wrong. And so sometimes a prophet's job wasn't fun. And one of John's messages might or might not have gotten him in a little bit of trouble. You see, there was a king named Herod. And I don't know if you've heard stories about Herod, but he was not a nice dude. He was constantly doing wrong things, um, just going crazy in general. And one day, John said that he was kind of not doing the right thing, and Herod was not a fan of that. As you can imagine, if you're an evil king and somebody says, hey, you're doing that wrong, like, you're wrong, you shouldn't be doing that, you'd probably be like, I don't need to listen to you. So he did that and kind of threw John in prison, right? Because back then, if he's a king, he can just throw anyone he wants into prison. And so he said, all right, John, let's go. Floom, ching, he's locked up. And so in Matthew 11, verse 2 and 3, it says, anybody want to read this for me? All right, Haley. John the Baptist was in prison. When he heard about the actions of the Messiah, <clears throat> he sent his disciples to him. They asked Jesus, are you the one who's supposed to come, or should we look for someone else? Matthew 11. This is tragic. There was supposed to be verse 3, and there is not. It's okay. We'll wing it. This is what we have, the Bible at 4. So, Matthew chapter 11. Got to flip there. Verse 3, it says, are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Did it say that? Oh, that's awkward. We, uh, we missed that one, but it's okay. Um, so basically, John got thrown into prison, and all of a sudden, he started to question things, right? He was like, wait, isn't the Messiah here? Isn't Jesus here? So why am I in jail? I think you'd be questioning that too, right? If you were just, you know, like you were preparing the way for Jesus, and the next thing you know, you're locked in jail. So John might be doubting, right? He's asking questions. He's like, wait a minute. Are you the one who was supposed to come, right? Like, are you it, or should I look for somebody else? And so, I mean, John, like Jesus, he had some followers. He had some disciples, um, who would visit him in prison. He you know, would go get messages. They would bring him some stuff if he needed anything. And so one day, he sent them on a little field trip. And that was to go ask Jesus if he was the one, right? And here he is now. Hel Hello. No, okay, okay. This is Larry. He is one of John's... <sighs> Disciples, yeah. Mm. So, Larry, do you want to tell me about that time that John kind of got put into prison because of Herod? Yeah, so it sounds like it's really rough for John. So why was John questioning, right? He asked Jesus if he was the one. So what was that about? All righty, well, I think that's it. Thank you for letting us know about John. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Larry, John's disciple, everybody. Give it up for Larry. Just an amazing guy. Um, he'll be here all week if you've got questions. Um, but yeah, so we doubt, right? Like you've been in situations where things didn't, totally work out. I've had a few of those in my life. If things worked out my way, did you know that I wouldn't even be here right now? I wouldn't be talking to you. I was supposed to go to a whole nother school all the way up 
near Chattanooga. Do you know where that is? Like in Tennessee? Like that was my plan, but things didn't go my way. Instead, I got to be here right here with you guys, and I think that's a little bit better. So let's read through Matthew eleven four through 6. This is Jesus' answer to John. So who wants to read this? It's kind of chunky. You already read. Carson, I'll let you. Jesus replied, go back to John. Report to him what you hear and see. Blind people receive sight. Dis- discipled people walk. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life. And the good news is preached to those who are poor. Blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me. All right. So John's like doubting, right? He's got questions. He's like, are you really the one? And, and John answers and says, or Jesus answers John and says like, look at all these things I've done, right? Blind people are receiving sight. People who can't walk, they're walking now. People who have had, you know, diseases, they're made clean again, right? The, the deaf can hear and the blind can see. He's saying, all of this stuff I'm doing. And you know what he's doing? He's actually quoting another prophet. Y'all heard of the prophet Isaiah? Y'all know, he was pretty much, he was a pretty big prophet back in the Old Testament. Um, and he was in this quote, he was talking about Jesus, the coming Messiah. Do y'all remember, was it last week that we talked about um, Jesus quoting some of the Old Testament people, right? Some of the, yeah, from Deuteronomy. Well, Jesus is doing that again here, but he's quoting Isaiah instead. He's saying, this prophecy about me, it's true. So, When we're doubting, right, when John was doubting, Jesus said, well, this is what I am. This is the proof right here. So John had some real questions. Like, he was in jail. He was locked up. If you actually read later on, John dies in jail. But he had some questions about who Jesus really was. And was that wrong? No. There's nothing wrong with having questions. Now, if John had heard this this response from Jesus and still didn't believe, maybe. But John believed, right? John was confident that this was Jesus. And because he asked that question, his confidence grew. You see, if we leave questions unasked, if we don't ask questions, then we may begin to doubt even more. Because then we don't get answers. So John had those questions about, you know, the way things were going, and he wanted some answers, and that happens to us too, right? Sometimes really hard things happen in our lives, and they may not be happening right now, but in the future, they could happen. I mean, school can be really hard sometimes. Like, anybody? Anybody have a hard time with school sometimes? Math? Don't get me started. Science? School can be really hard sometimes, or maybe... You have to clean your room for the third time this week because you keep making a mess, but it's so fun because you have so many cool things to do, right? Cleaning your room or going to school, doing homework, tryouts for all your sports and things you're doing. It can be really hard. And sometimes it gets too hard. And there's questions that we have. We can't just Google. We can't just look up, like, what does this mean? Right? So what do we do? Somebody answered it earlier. Where did John start when he had questions? The Bible. Correct. Jesus quoted directly from the Old Testament. That was already a book in Jesus' time, right? Jesus quoted that. So when John had questions, he got answers from the Bible. And there's so many ways that that God speaks to us, right? Um, He can speak to you through the Bible or through his spirit or through prayer. One of the cool ways that God talks to me sometimes is through nature. Have you ever seen just like an amazing sunset or an amazing sunrise on your way to school and you're like, golly, that is beautiful. And I can just hear God saying like, you know, I made that, right? And I made you and I made all of this creation so beautiful and I care about you. And so 
I'm going to get to show you just this little glimpse of me. That's some ways that God can speak to you, and he can speak to all of y'all in some amazing ways. And also, God's put some pretty awesome people in your life. If you look around this room, you've got a lot of awesome leaders, and they have a big responsibility, right? They're here to teach you. They're here to answer questions. They're here to be here through the, through the really fun, happy days and through the really sad, hard days, right? So all of these teachers in here, they want you to ask questions. They want to answer those questions for you guys. How else do we get knowledge without asking questions? So don't be afraid when you're in small groups. Don't be afraid when you see them on Wednesday night or wherever to ask them some questions because they would love to help you out. You see, we've got a lot of resources. So you don't have an excuse. You can't say, I didn't know or, or whatever. So don't be afraid to ask those questions, guys. So we've got a question here. I'm not sure what the question is. When you have questions about God, who can you ask? So I want you to think before we go, Will's going to come up in a second, do worship. But I want you to think, like, who are those people in your life? Like, you have your small group leaders here, or maybe your parents, or maybe a teacher at school that you know can help, Right? So think about those people and then think about some questions, right? If you have questions about the Bible or what it means in the Bible, there's a lot of weird things in the Bible. So even I have questions about that. Just think about those questions or, or things in your life, whatever it is. Just think about that question. Think about questions you have. Um, and then I'm going to pray and Will's going to come up and lead worship, okay? Not good? All right, God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that you allow us to have knowledge in the first place, Lord, that you want us to grow um, and become closer to you, Lord. Help us not be afraid because sometimes it's um, scary to ask questions. Sometimes it's hard. You don't want to look dumb, but Lord, no question is dumb when it's about you. So Lord, help us to remember that. Um, help us to have a good small group and a good worship time. And I pray this in your name. Amen.